Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, welcome. Um, hello, everyone. It's so great to um, see so many people here, especially on a Friday morning, so thank you. Um, my name is Julia Himberg, um, and for those of you who don't know me, I'm the Director of Film and Media Studies and a professor here at ASU. Um, so this is gonna be the first of three alumni panels we're hosting this semester, and as you probably already know, uh, today's topic is going from college to career. Um, before we dive in, I just wanted to kind of let you know a little bit about like why we're hosting these panels, um, because really our goal with, you know, a BA in Film and Media Studies, what we're trying to do is to provide you with this really comprehensive analysis, you know, of film, of television, digital media, of screenwriting, so that, you know, we can help you develop yourselves into more critically informed kind of writers, storytellers, critics, right, and consumers of media. These are things, you know, if you've taken a lot of FMS classes you hear about, but this is sort of, you know, the, the larger goal of the program, because our hope is that you leave the program with a set of really concrete and valuable skill sets that lead to employment opportunities um, in fields across the media industries. And so as part of that process, these alumni panels are designed to give you examples of the various kinds of careers that are possible with an FMS degree. Um, and hopefully, you know, you'll gain some insight into useful strategies for making that transition from college to career. Um, so with that said, um, let's kind of go ahead and get started. And the format for today, just so you know, um, is that our moderators will ask um, our panelists a set of questions for about the first 40 to 45 minutes. Um, and then we want time for you to be able to ask questions. So if you have questions along the way, please feel free to put them in the chat. Um, obviously we will do our best to get to as many as possible. You can also wait um, until we begin the Q&A and post them in the chat. Um, and um, hopefully you'll get some good answers. So now I'm just briefly going to introduce you to our two moderators, um, current FMS students who have graciously agreed to moderate today's session. And our first moderator is Charlotte Benchoff, who is originally from Boston, Massachusetts, and transferred to ASU during her sophomore year. Um, she's majoring in film and media studies with minors in film and media production and Russian. And Kale Epps is our second moderator, and Kale's a senior, and he's majoring in film and media studies with con a concurrent major in history and a minor in anthropology. And in fall of 2022, we're very excited that he's going to be beginning um, a master's graduate program in cinema and media studies at USC's School of Cinematic Arts. Um, so thanks to you both, and I will pass it off to you, Charlotte. So our first alumni is going to be Elizabeth Schroeder. She graduated the class of 2021. Elizabeth is currently working as a social as a social media manager at Spark Growth Strategies. Since graduation graduation, she has actively continued to apply for jobs in the ent entertainment industry with the hopes of working in development or in a writer's room. Um, and then our second alumni is JP Estes. Um, he graduated the class of 2015. After graduating from ASU in 2015, JP moved to Los Angeles and began working as an office PA and then a showrunner's assistant on ABC's The Middle. In February 2020, he signed with Zero Gravity Management. And since then, he's been involved in the development process for several film and TV projects. And our uh, third panelist is Lu Nguyen. Uh, she graduated in the class of 2014. After graduating from ASU with an English and film degree, Lu worked in LA in the editorial department on different television shows and movies for over half a decade, including AMC's The Walking Dead, The CW's The Flash, and DreamWorks Bad Guys. In 2019, she moved back to Arizona. She currently works at ASU's Enterprise Marketing Hub as their senior video editor. And uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump right on in with the questions. So the first question uh, we have for our panelists is what steps did you take in securing your first job post-graduation? And um, since Elizabeth, uh, this is maybe a fresher question for you, uh, would you mind go ahead and starting us off? 
Yeah, I think, um, you know, like, you know, like Charlotte mentioned, I did just graduate in May. Uh, this is a very difficult industry to get into. And so, um, you know, one of the biggest advices I had was applying for a job is a full-time job. Um, you know, you have to know where to find the jobs. You have to be ready because there are a lot of people applying for them. And so they go very quickly. And so um, I've been sort of just navigating that environment of finding these jobs, um, getting the interviews and, you know, just trying to break in. And so I had a, I had a few job interviews recently um, that were going really well, but then I found out I didn't get the position. And so I'm still in that, um, you know, that trying to break in time period. And I, you know, every interview, I learned something new about how to go about it, how to phrase things, things that they want to hear, things that, you know, will automatically sort of turn them off. And so every, you know, every interview is a learning experience. And that's something that I've gotten a lot better at. I think back to the interviews I had right after graduation and no, just no, I get, I get why I didn't get it back then. And so, um, yeah, so I've grown a lot in that and I know uh, better how to navigate it. And so, um, yeah, that, that's just sort of where I'm at right now, as far as um, answering the questions, I am very much in the job process, um, the job hunt. And so I can answer a lot of questions about that portion of it. Awesome, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, JP, how about you? Uh, the question was, what steps did you take in securing your first job post-graduation? Yeah, so as uh, Charlotte said, my first job post-graduation was as an office PA on a comedy called The Middle. And uh, I got very fortunate and Professor Sandler played a part in this as well. Um, I, we, I was on the, just doing the master's program fully online. So we were, you know, he would set up panels online, we would do, you know, whatever, uh, where they would interview people. And if you were in town, which I was living in Arizona at the time, you could come in, then you could like meet the person. So there was one day, uh, he had someone, a former student who was coming in, and they worked on the middle as the showrunner's assistant. I was like, oh, great, I want to go work as, uh, I want to work as an assistant, try to get around writers, that's what I want to do. It's like, I should meet someone. So I called out of my day job, and uh, came in. And I was the only person who showed up. Everyone else watched it online. So it was me, Professor Sandler, Professor Bradley, and a person who's a friend of mine now just sitting in a room. So I was like, oh, okay, we just hung out. And when she, when we were leaving, she was like, oh, you are the only person who showed up. Send me your resume. Uh, one month later, I was calling the line. I was on the phone with the line producer, convincing him that I would drive to LA to come interview. And that's what I did. And then two weeks later, I was moving to LA. So I got very fortunate in that, in that regard, but kind of piggybacking off of what uh, Elizabeth said, on top of it being a full-time job, because I've had to interview for plenty of jobs since after the fact, a huge part of it, and it does sound like a cliche, is how much, it's who you know, is meeting people, going out, you know, taking advantage of opportunities. Um, so, so, you know, for example, I got to, again, with Professor Bradley and Professor Sandler, go to Sundance in 2014. And people I met on that trip, I'm still in contact with now, a chunk of us have moved to LA. And it's kind of like a little bit of a support group out here. So it's a lot, you know, every and, and since that every job I'll say that I have got, and every inter, all the interviews I've conducted, there's always been, you know, one degree of separation from either from that person. So um, a huge part of it, I said, was just taking advantage of opportunities like that. Um, and, you know, just kind of, you know, you know, kind of hustling in a way too, as well to, uh, to try to get that first job set up. Yeah, thanks a lot, JP. It's very helpful. Um, and Lou, uh, yeah, it'd be great to hear about your experience. Again, the question is, what steps did you take in securing your first job post-graduation? Awesome. Wonderful. Well, thank you, first off, everyone, for taking the time on your Friday to be here. Um, yeah, so I think my answer to this has to have like a teeny bit of backstory. Um, when I was, when I was a, I think I was still a freshman um, in the English department, um, there was this kind of like internship kind of like event thing. And I, from there, met uh, Dr. Sandler, who then was the director of internships. And so 
um, I remember he was saying something about, you know, like sophomore year is a great time to get started. And at the time I was like, well, what about freshman year? So after that initial um, kind of meeting with him, I got connected to get my first internship in the Valley as I'm pretty sure freshman at ASU at um, what's now called fingerprint, fingerprint media. Um, and from there, what I did was promote movies that were coming out. And so after some time there, one of my titles was um, the Disney intern, which AKA meant that I was promoting specifically the Disney movies. So with that in mind, um, I was able to apply and get um, a Disney internship the summer before I found out it was my last semester at ASU. So I applied for that Disney internship. And I think a good reason why I kind of like got the initial interview was because um, of that Val Arizona Valley Disney internship title. So with that under my belt and that summer internship underway, I was able to connect with um, Linda Sullivan was my counselor who strategically and just helpfully um, saw that with those internship credits, I could graduate in two and a half years. So like total two and a half years. So I graduated early. Um, and so during that last semester and Elizabeth, JP, to your point, it is a full-time job <laughs> applying. I was actually looking for jobs during that final semester. And so I actually that final semester, I didn't have any bites at the moment, but I still knew, and I forget where this is from, but someone told me that it was important important if you want a job in LA to kind of just be there, be in LA. So Elizabeth, to your point, it's smart to have a, an LA address if that's where you want to work, just because when people are looking at resumes, like typically they need someone yesterday. And so already being there is really important. And so I moved to LA two weeks after graduating and thankfully not too far long after that, um, I, the, my old boss at my Disney internship was the one who connected me with my first PA job on The Flash. So to JP's point too, it's um, I've uh, every job that I've had has been led by someone who I've worked with. So yes, the cheesy cliche saying um, of it's who you know, um, I think it's uh, to add to that too, it's who you know and who you've um, had a, like a positive work experience with typically. Um, so yeah, that's how I got to my first job. It's it's really helpful. Thanks a lot for those answers. And and we actually just had another uh, another one of our panelists just joined. Um, and I, I would just like to introduce him real quick. Mark A. Silva graduated the class of 2018 after securing the position of acquisitions assistant at High Octane Pictures post graduation. He was promoted to head of acquisitions, where he still currently works. Um, hello, Mark. Are you uh, are you settled in? Uh, and we, we we have a question for you. The the first question is: What steps did you take in securing your first job post graduation? Yeah, so 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 sorry for my tardiness, guys. Is you'll learn when you get to a job when you get in. You know, in the mornings and there's fires. Um, first of all, it's great to see all my old professors, Dr. Hamburg, Professor Bradley. It's good to see you guys. I haven't seen you guys in so long. Um, uh, the the main thing I would say is um, you know, I always kind of when I'm talking to um, filmmakers here is, um, you know, a lot of times when they're looking for distributors or a lot of times in development, we're looking for cast, like to be able to attach uh, to a movie. I always kind of have to say, especially for creatives, it's really hard to kind of be okay with rejection. I always kind of say, you know, when you're, especially when you're looking for cast, you might need to reach out to 25 agents or 25 different actors to be able to hopefully get one that you're looking for. And that's very similar to how I kind of got my job here at High Octane is, you know, I was consistently at the time, you know, just kind of doing odd jobs, writing for like Screen Rant and What Culture. And I just made sure to constantly be looking at, you know, jobs on, you know, Indeed and LinkedIn. And then once I had my position, once I had my interview, I just kind of knew that the internships that I had through ASU and the experience that I had was really going to be able to kind of prove my um, my worth and that I knew what I was talking about. And honestly, just knowing movies, watching them as much as I did, knowing some of the distributors out there that really kind of got my boss to have the idea of, you know, what I was looking for and being able to, you know, I was looking for those entry level positions, which really, really helped, you know, I was okay making coffee or doing calendars or doing schedules when I first got in, because I knew, you know, once I just, you know, got in, I worked my butt off, I could potentially kind of move forward, which I did. And so, um, 
Yeah, just looking as much as you possibly can, being able to be as fluid as you possibly can with, oh, right, maybe this isn't exactly what I'm looking for, but it'll at least get my foot into the door of working within the industry. Don't be afraid to apply for a job, whether it's something that is so small of a, you know, commercial small job here in the valley or wherever you live or it's something on netflix be willing to apply the worst that could possibly happen is you don't get the position and you're right back in the same spot you were all right thank you mark um let's just jump into our second question um so is there a single piece of advice about building a career that you wish someone had imparted imparted on you while you were still at ASU? Um, you know, I, um, I got a lot of good advice, so it's kind of hard to, to say that one. I would say, um, you know, I worked with, um, with Dr. Sandler a lot to kind of get my internships. And, you know, I, I've seen, you know, jokes or memes where it's like, you know, you need a for an entry level position, you need, you know, a year's worth of experience. And it's kind of like an oxymoron it doesn't really make sense. But that's exactly why internships are so important. You know, I did an internship at the Phoenix Film Festival. I did the one at the Sundance Film Festival with um, uh, uh, Bradley and Sandler. I, you know, um, interned at a company in Los Angeles from the person that I met when I was at Sundance, who was a previous alumni. And so, you know, just having that experience, like, you know, um, obviously what we learn at ASU is extremely important, but it's really hard other than, you know, to just have that, um, that degree on your resume to try to explain what all the, um, you know, the stuff you learn and information and knowledge from ASU, but those internships, that experience, that is what's going to be really, really important for those people. And so ASU has so many opportunities, whether it's just going to any of your professors and asking them if they have an idea or if they know anyone you can intern with or, you know, talking to the internship directors, it's really going to be able to um, just kind of give you that leg up once you do get to those, um, to those interviews or to those job positions. All right, um, how about we throw it over to you, JP? Do you have? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I remember, I don't know if this is advice from Professor Stanler, but I met it stuck with me. And I remember him one time saying, don't be afraid to work on something that isn't good. And I, I remember thinking, that's ridiculous. That, that doesn't make any sense. And then I spent four years working on things I would never watch on my own. And, and, but, you know, you, but those, the times of working with people, I think, you know, when you're on the outside looking in, you, at least I know for myself, I did not realize the amount of people to miss for something to be good takes so much. It takes so, so much. And it takes hundreds of people coming together and doing so much. So even on things that might not necessarily be good, there are a lot of people working very hard, a lot of people who are very passionate. And when I came out here, you know, I just took a job, whatever I could get, and just kind of followed that advice. And I, those relationships have lasted throughout, you know, the six, almost seven years that I've been out here now. Um, so I, I think, you know, that 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 advice has always stuck with me because there's been, I'd be like, oh, I don't know if I want to work on that show and, you know, or whatever. I don't know if I want to do this. And it's just, but it's work. And it's sometimes you have to look at it that way. There's times to be precious about it. And there's times when it's like, this is work, you know, you have to take that step and, 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 and give it a shot. So that always stuck with me because I, I maybe in the back of my mind, I was like, oh, I'm going to go only work on Breaking Bad or I'm only going to work on Mad Men or something like that. And I have not worked on any shows like that. But uh, I, I think, you know, just going after every opportunity and essentially that it all kind of always comes back to that. That's really interesting. Yeah, I like that. Um, Lou, how about you? Yeah, uh, really quick, JP, to your point, I worked on some things that I would not choose to watch. And then especially when those Rotten Tomato reviews comes out, it's just like, oh, good thing I don't take this personally because <laughs> this is work and this is not. <laughs> so yeah. agreed. And to that point too, you don't know where that might lead you to. So like, I remember when I was at those jobs and I saw those Rotten Tomato things, I'd be like, well, that hurts a tiny bit. But when you realize that like sometimes, yes, it's just work. I think that's very important too. Um, but in terms of my own advice, I feel like Mark and JP, you gave some solid advice. To your point, Mark, I would also agree that at ASU take advantage of internships, um, whether it's local or um, 
like you're able to go to LA or wherever you choose to be. I feel like internships are like the key to kind of like even seeing if that's what you'd be interested in doing. Um, and then, yeah, just that experience is super, super um, important as you move forward in your career. But I would say to add on to what I guess if I could tell myself back then, um, what a piece of advice would be is to just have courage and be kind because one, to have courage. I know Dr. Sandler, you don't, you, I don't think I've ever told you this, but I was very nervous to like even approach you just to be like, hi, never met, you. like, hello. Like networking is kind of intimidating. So, um, but to that point, that little itty bit of courage has led me to like my whole career. So thank you one, Dr. Sandler for letting me be that nervous freshman that was like, hello help. Um, so, and then with that, um, I think that courage to also sparks um, the idea that you were touching on, Mark, of if you see a position that says, you know, like, blah, 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 years of experience, like, take that with like a teeny grain of salt, just because experience is very, very important. But I think, like, what I've learned in my career is like, more importantly, is that being kind aspect. And so, something I was taught um, by my bosses at Disney was the reason I got that job amidst like a, I don't even want to say the number of people who applied. It kind of freaked me out after I found out the like odds of it. But once I got that position, they told me that like what, you know, me and my fellow interns, what made us stand out was that we passed like the layover test, so to speak. So it's like, who would you, you're often working like very long hours, depending on what department you're in, in film, who is the person that you would be okay with. Like if you guys had a flight, like a 12 hour layover in some random place, like who would um, who would be that person that you'd be like, okay with spending that much time and is like a team player and someone you want to be with in the thick of it. Because a lot of these films, uh, it's not always like roses and rainbows when it's, it comes time to making these. So I would say internships, have courage and be kind and just, you know, go for it, you know, so yeah. Those are some great answers. Um, we're going to now move on to our third question. Oh, sorry, um, um, Elizabeth. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, almost got off scot free for that last one, but um, no, it's okay. Um, I would say, I mean, it's kind of echoing what everybody's been saying. Everyone has really great advice, and I just kind of want to like hammer in the importance of networking. Um, I, you know. I was in college during the pandemic. I graduated during the pandemic. And so, um, you know, that net networking is just, has, has been so important during my job search of, you know, I'm, you know, fortunate enough to have people in my network from either past internships or, you know, programs at like through ASU where I've met people in the industry and made maintained contact with them, you know, like, sending them thank you notes after a panel discussion, after a meeting, after whatever it is. And then, you know, following up a few months later, seeing how they're doing, you know, telling them where you're at of, you know, if you're looking for internships, that's how, you know, that's how I got my first internship in the industry. Um, senior year, I had met someone through the, the Film Spark boot camp, career boot camp, um, and I had sent her a thank you note few months later, I was just like, oh, I'm trying to find an internship in the industry. Do you know of any? Do you know where I can look for them? And she just offered me an internship on the spot uh, just because I did like reach out and I did like maintain that relationship with her. Um, and then, you know, as I'm applying for jobs now, I reach out to her. I reach out to other people that I met through that boot camp, And I'm just like, hey, like, you know, I've appreciated your help so much. Like, as we're, you know, through this process, you know, I applied for these places. If you know anybody, that'd be great. And, you know, I've had them reach out, have gotten my resume flagged for an interview. And so networking, it, you know, it's really important because there are so many people going for these jobs and networking can help you stand out from that big, big, you know, stack of resumes. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, people in your network can get you the interview, but you have to still know what you want and you still have to be able to sell yourself for that position. Um, and so it's, it's, it's a bit of a dancing act of, you know, building a network, using your network, but um, 
you know, making sure that you're actually ready for that job and you know what you want uh, when you do get the interview. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. I, I love that building a network, using a network. I, I like that. Yeah. So, so now question three. <laughs> I know. Thanks, Charlotte. Okay, so yeah, our third question is, what are three important things you learned as an FMS major that ended up benefiting you in your jobs? Uh, yeah, why don't we scoot it on back to Mark for this one? <clears throat> yeah, uh, so three important things I learned as an FMS major. Um, I would say number one um, is, uh, yeah, especially again, back to, um, you know, working with Dr. Sandler is, you know, I remember being at ASU and we um, we met with uh, some people that were in the, uh, or at Sundance, we met with some people in the industry. And um, I, I remember going to Dr. Sandler and being like, hey, like, do you think it's okay if I like go ask him, like if they're looking for um, like interns or not? And Dr. Sandler was like, I think it'd be weird if you didn't, like if that's what you wanna do. And so yeah, being willing to kind of take that, you know, initial step and goal to try to, you know, reach out there and really, you know, kind of ask someone, you know, what you're looking for. And then I would also say, you know, being able to, um, you know, another one would be really being able to kind of work with people that you may not, you know, actively um, have, you know, the exact, you know, a, 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 a agreements with or opinions for, um, you know, just, I mean, one of, one of the most brilliant things I ever heard was, um, it was Professor Green, Michael Green at the time, and there was someone on ASU and they, um, they had just the signs where it was just, you know, God hates whoever. And it was just, it bothered me. I was so just frustrated. I got into class and I was talking to Professor Green about it. And I was like, I hate that guy. Like, I want to, I want to go yell at him. Professor Green was like, aren't you so happy you live in a country where that guy's allowed to go do that? And I was like, oh, I guess. Like, just knowing that, like, you know, people are allowed to express themselves. You're not always going to agree with people, but especially, you know, the people in your class or the people that you work with, learning how to use, you know, your strengths and or their strength to kind of, you know, um, be able to, uh, you know, improve yourself. And um, again, I, you know, I, I think a lot of what Lou said, you know, just being kind, you know, the professors, you know, like uh, Professor Bradley, Dr. Hemberg, the professors that were, you know, really, you know, kind to us and actually cared about, you know, us learning and what we did. Those are the ones that I really kind of, you know, gravitated towards and were able to, um, you know, learn the most from. And I kind of use that with, you know, a lot of my employees being able to, you know, help them throughout, not just being, you know, I've had bosses and I've had professors who are ones who just, you know, want to, you know, here's what it is, figure it out, come back to me when you're done. And I don't think that works in any which way. Even our CEO is one of the nicest guys. And if you have an issue, if you're having a problem, if you're struggling with someone, something, there's a movie I really want to get, I'm just not sure how to, he'll be like, come on in, sit down, let's figure out a way to do it. And I'll try to use that as much as I possibly can with, um, you know, my employees, just being able to be there and be comfortable with them. Because no one wants to go to a job where they, they aren't happy. They're just not going to perform. The productivity is not going to be well. I'm not going to be good if my, you know, higher ups are being, you know, rude or I'm not going to be comfortable with them. And the same exact thing with my employees. So it was, it was a lot of, you know, um, again, as much as all of that, you know, the knowledge and information was very important. And I learned so much at ASU, um, the, you know, the social skills and all that is equally as important for sure. Yeah, it's really helpful. Thanks a lot, Mark. Appreciate it. How about you, JP? Uh, the question is, what are three important things you learned as an FMS major that ended up benefiting you in your jobs? Uh, yeah, so I think uh, so a few things. Um, one of them is, you know, again, this is, I, I think our professors uh, always did a great job of kind of setting the expectation of what you're going to get into when you kind of get into this industry. I felt Obviously, there you know you can't be prepared for everything because uh, every show, every production is going to be a little bit different. Um, and you know, when I kept coming up as an assistant, every boss is going to be different too, uh, and have their quirks. But you know, it was definitely you know expressed like you're going to go put in grunt work, like that's just like that's what it's going to be, and you have to be okay with that, and you have to you have to do it. You have to do it with a smile. You have to do it with enthusiasm. I mean, that's I think enthusiasm goes a long way and people don't normally think about that just because normally when people talk about film or tv it's always the e it's easy to be critical uh it's much easier to be critical than to find something good in something or do something along those lines and so i think enthusiasm and the enthusiasm and doing the grunt work um so that was obviously a a, a big thing and, and i think taking that into that first pa job led to me becoming a showrunner's assistant and that mentality i tried tried to maintain that mentality 
um, as long as I've been out here and all the different jobs I've done. I think a thing for me personally that the FMS program really did that was helpful um, was just kind of open my eyes to how just absolutely gigantic film is and all the just the blind spots I have of the different type of movies that were being made, the different type of jobs that are being done. I mean, you know, you think about at least my my perspective was like, you know, there's writers, directors, producers, crew members, right? And it's just like all of the, um, you know, I think uh, uh, Elizabeth said it earlier before we kind of hopped on. She's like, oh yeah, I met someone who's a data analyst for HBO. Like there's just so many different kinds of jobs. So that was very eye-opening and it's something that I've been able to take into my career and, you know, take into, you know, just kind of meeting people and, you know, networking and building relationships um, as well. And then I think the third thing, uh, and this is this is the biggest the biggest thing for me is uh, how to write. Um, I I had never really written a screenplay before I start you know before I started, and then I uh, bothered Professor Bradley as much as I possibly could for two straight years. Uh, and it, last night I went you know my last semester I did an independent study with him to write a feature, and I actually looked at it last night, and it'll never see the light of day, and it never should, but. Uh, I saw some stuff in there. I was like, oh, okay, I kind of still do that a little bit or, oh, I, I see that. Or why the hell did I do that? Like that doesn't make any sense. And so, but, but it, it, it laid the foundation for what I'm doing now. Um, you know, so without that, I, I you know, I, I don't know what kind of writer I would be, if I would be a writer or whatever. Um, so I get Professor Bradley, this is my way for, to say thank you in front of, in front of everyone here and make sure it's being recorded. But um the writing and the hours I spent with him in his office, going over scripts, getting notes, his graciousness in doing so, uh, that's that's the biggest thing I've taken. Yeah, thanks a lot, JP. That's uh, it's really helpful. Thanks. How about you, Lou? Uh, what are the three most important things you learned as an FMS major that ended up benefiting you in your jobs? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I would say. Um, in agreement to both Mark and JP too. Every time I'm like, yes, yes, as you're speaking. So I appreciate your guys' input too. But one of the first things I would say is um, to be okay with asking questions. So I feel so, I don't feel bad. In hindsight, I don't feel bad. But at the time I was in Dr. Sandler's office or Linda Sullivan's office, uh, my counselor just asking a bunch, a bunch of questions. And for my professors too, just either about like assignments, like, you know, those run of the mill things, but, um, just like really practical questions, I guess, too. Um, again, these are the people that have lived what you are hoping to live and know, or if they don't know the answer to your question, know someone who might know the answer, who might know the answer. So for me, asking questions was really, really helpful in me understanding, okay, what would, what does it really look like to live in LA? Like, what does, you know, um, graduating early look like? What does this internship do that I didn't realize it could do for my um, academic career? Um, aside from asking questions, I would say the second thing is to kind of like what you said, JP, is to be open to like the different positions that are in the industry, especially initially. Um, I think I would say that um, speaking to the time that I did my internships in the Valley, I knew in my head that I loved editing and editorial, editorial but I also knew that it it's wise to just get kind of like a broad scope or look at other positions too, should an, a good internship arise, just because one, you're meeting new people, two, you're learning like a side of the industry you might not have known about that you might work with in the future. And you, by you understanding their role, it will only perfect your role as a person if you understand the whole process of how like different sectors of the industry work. And so I would say, ask questions um, there as well. Um, and the third thing I would say is, and it's almost like a, I wish I would have reminded myself of this, but to enjoy the process too. So during the time that I was at ASU doing the film program, um, after my internship, I didn't realize that I would be able to graduate early. And like that, it was just like, oh, I can be done this semester. And I remember just like being kind of like shocked a teeny bit. But what I do appreciate about my shorter time at ASU was that I, you know, still did what I loved, like what initially got me into the industry or interested in the in the industry, which specifically for me was editing goofy videos at the time. They are still goofy and will also not see the light of day, but that helped really ground me um, 
to remind myself why I'm applying for hundreds of jobs, why I'm trying to push myself to network. So also just like reminding yourself why you're doing the dang thing, I think is also important too. So thanks. Fabulous. Yeah, thanks a lot, Lou. Um, and finally, Elizabeth, uh, the question is, what are three important things you learned as an FMS major that ended up benefiting you in your jobs? Yeah, I think, um, I again, I agree with things that everybody has said. And so, um, and I second everything. And But I think something that hasn't been said yet, I, I really appreciate the like the emphasis on critical analysis that I gained with the degree, um, because I find in my job interviews, you know, they'll they'll always ask in one way or another, you know, what TV shows are you watching right now? What what's the last movie you saw? You know, just because that you know that tells them a lot about you as a person, your interests, what you like, um, and so critical. You know, you have to be able to, you know think of something on the top of your head, you know, and be able to talk about it in a way that's not, you know, I love the office. I just, you know, watch it all the time, which is great. Like you can do that, but, you know, knowing a recent show that came out and being able to talk about it, knowing a show that the person you're interviewing with has worked on, watching it beforehand, being able to like talk about it in you know, a not surface level way, just, you know, that's a very, it's a very easy thing that you can do. Um, it's something that people don't necessarily think of when they're applying for jobs and they don't really think of it as a way of, you know, getting you to stand out, but, you know, it shows that you're proactive. It shows that you are smart. Show, you know, it shows that you know what you're talking about. Um, and so I think critical analysis would be the first one. Um, and then, you know, taking advantage of opportunities like as they present themselves. And so whether that's, you know, the Sundance program or the film career boot camp and, you know, study abroad, it's just like different programs that ASU has, you know, you're only, you're only a student for a limited amount of time. And so, and, you know, like Lou said, she didn't realize that she was about to graduate very quickly, you know, so it's just like, you don't know what the future holds and so to take advantage of the opportunities as they as they come up I think is really important um and then lastly I would just say like utilizing your faculty members um I you know they are like they're the first people in your network that you know like you're starting out with and so using them you know going to office hours talking to them and building relationships with them it's you know it's huge as far as, you know, I was in Barrett Honors College and, you know, Professor Himberg and Professor Bradley happened to be my, um, my committee members. And so it just, and I got to spend a lot of like one-on-one -on -one time with them and Professor Sandler, I, you know, we did the Sundance program. And so you never know like who can help you in what ways. And so to see, you know, to just to see faculty as like people and that, you know, you can learn from and, you know, utilize to like help you improve because that, you know, that's their job. That's what they want to do. And so, um, again, that's an opportunity that is easily passed on, you know, or like something that you don't necessarily think of. But um, yeah, so I think critical analysis, taking advantage of opportunities as they come, and then just utilizing your faculty members is what I would say. Thank you all. Those are such good answers. I'm going to um, take over here a little bit and moderate because we have some really good questions already in the chat. And I thought with our remaining time, um, we could pivot and, and try to answer some of those. Um, and so um, I want to do this in kind of a funny way. Lou, I want to start with you. Um, the general question for everyone, though, is, um, is there are there specific things you need to have on your resume in order to apply for internships or any tips for freshmen? And the reason that I want to start um, with you, Lou, that is because there's a sort of related question um, about would you recommend the Disney College program for someone interested in social media management or talent acquisition? So basically, I'm throwing a question there based on your personal experience, but also the larger question to everyone about tips, especially around um, resumes um, as you're trying to, you know, move ahead. 
Yes, absolutely. Okay. So the first question, um, what do you need on your resume for, um, in, in order to apply for internships and a tips for freshmen? So I would say one is, um, wonderful that you are a freshman don't let again that like experience thing kind of like trick you or fool you at all um it is important in some cases obviously to know how to do the job that they're asking but i learned from personal experience that internships are like uh it's for beginners it's to learn like they're meant to learn so i think for your resume specifically tying in as much um how do I, I'm not saying to lie, but I'm saying to like, with your experience, always look at the position that you're applying for and like rewrite how it relates to that specific internship. So I'm trying to think of like a past example, but for the Disney internship that Dr. Sandler was able to help me get, it was a lot of promoting, marketing. My previous job experience was being a student and working for a magazine and uh, working for, um, like job career fairs with my aunt. And so those, those those things, those titles have nothing to do with the internship I was trying to apply for. But what I did was I wrote, you know, the skills that I obtained from promoting a job was I know how to promote, I know how to talk. So I'm, I tailor your, that's the word, tailor your um, resume to the positions that you're applying for. I'm not saying to lie, I'm saying to tailor so that it just like shows how your past experience will relate to your current experience or potential current experience. So um, I hope that answers that question. And just encouragement as a freshman, like what got us all into kind of this industry, I feel like is our love for movies and our love for things. So don't let your beginningness or your freshmanness like prevent you from wanting to just pursue what you want to pursue. Um, I think that, yeah, that courage of just like, okay, they're asking for like sophomores and above, but what if they don't get like sophomores? Like JP was the only one at that meeting. What if you're the only one there? Then it's all you. Um, and then the second question is the Disney college program. So I, would say if you're interested in social media management and talent acquisition, heck yeah, go for that Disney College program. Um, I worked specifically for, it wasn't the Disney College program, it was actually just through Disney summer internships, but I would say that internship experience was one of the best and um, most valuable experiences in my career. And so the Disney College program really, I have had friends that have also been a part of that, have that speak nothing but positive things to their experiences. It's like one, very fun to be like, oh my gosh, the movies I grew up with, I'm working for the studio that created it. But two, they also take care of their interns um, very well. And um, though I was a part of an internship that focused on editorial, the going into like social media for Disney, I think is also very important and um, it's, Disney is very broad, like Disney is a huge studio that I didn't even realize how huge it was until I got there. And so I think that experience would be um, great and I would recommend it. So yeah, hopefully that answers some of it. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Elizabeth, to you. Yeah, I would say um, as far as things like on your resume that you know are really important to try and get, um, it is kind of difficult, but having a Los Angeles address is really important. You know, being in LA, um, a lot of the jobs that at least I'm applying for, um, they, are, they are ready. They need someone that can start like next week. <laughs> um, I know when I was in the process of moving to LA, I was interviewing for a position and they needed someone to start on Monday. And I was moving the week after that. And, you know, it, it, that, was one of the reasons I didn't get that position is because I wasn't there and I wasn't ready to start right away. And so um, is, that is something that you should think about um, depending on what you wanna do in the industry. There are a lot of things to do in the industry. You know, There are a lot of companies in Arizona too, um, but depending on what you wanna do, that is something you should consider. The fact that uh, being in LA and then also um, assistant positions are huge. Uh, there's, you know, working in a mail room, um, you know, working at an agency, like there's just a lot of positions where that's sort of an expectation is that that you know what you're doing or that you have assistant experience, um, which is a very difficult thing to get because everybody wants that. But um, just knowing that that is something that, 
you know, that a lot of people look for on a resume. And so while you're in school, while things are remote, um, to try and sort of look towards internships that are more of assistant roles, it, you know, a lot of this industry is you have to do things that you don't necessarily want to do in order to get the positions that you want. You know, you have to be what you have to show that you're willing to do scheduling, to do rolling calls and like to do the, these sort of tedious things. Um, and you know, it, it's because those are those baseline foundational skills that people in the industry sort of expect you to already have. And so to either, you know, like Lou was saying, gear and, you know, sort of phrase your, your experience and showcase your transferable skills and how, you know, maybe you haven't been an assistant before, but you have these, you know, these certain skills that will make you a good assistant um, and make you a good candidate, you know? And so it's, it's trying to get the specific things people are looking for, but if you can't get that, trying to build transferable skills and trying to showcase what, you know, how you can do what they want you to do. <laughs> so, yeah. No, that's, that's really great. And before I throw it to JP, I just wanted to mention two things because you um, both so far have talked, I think about this really important issue of these transferable skills. And sometimes um, I think it can be hard to figure out what are those, right? How do I identify what I've learned as an FMS student into those skills that you can put on a resume? And I would encourage any of you um, here today to talk to a faculty member um, in FMS because we're always happy to sit down and help you try to identify what those things are, um, you know, that you have learned and the skills that you have that you may not even be totally aware of at the time, right? But that are those kinds of transferable skills that you can then put on a resume. So I would say that um, there have also been quite a few questions in the chat about, you know, what if you aren't in a position to go to LA or maybe you don't wanna to go to LA. Um, and um, I just wanted to note that our third panel in April um, with alumni is going to feature alumni who are exclusively in Phoenix and Arizona. Um, so please um, join in for that one so you can definitely hear more specifics um, about that. Um, I know Mark can speak to that um, and Lou is here, but I, I think um, I just wanted to note that so you can kind of know that that one's coming up and hopefully will be helpful. So JP, I'm passing it to you. Well, I, I would just really echo everything Lou and Elizabeth said about resumes, um, especially because they sound like they were much better about pursuing internships in college than I was because I was not good about it. Uh, so, um, I, you know, it's really, I, I think, I, you know, some of the some of the questions too, because I saw in the chat, or you know, how to stand out with those type of things is how to, you know, in your cover letter or things along those lines, um, especially if you don't have experience. And it, it kind of comes back to, again, what I said, like was enthusiasm. When I have inter I've interviewed, you know, when I've interviewed people for not necessarily an internship, but like an assistant job. So I was, you know, uh, working as a producer on a pilot and I was interviewing people to come be the showrunners, the assistant for the showrunners. And I got flooded with email, with, with like, um, with, with resumes, uh, when I kind of put word out that I was looking for it. And everyone has, ex everyone had experience, or a lot of people have comparable experience, or someone might have worked on a season or two more than another person. But it was really, it, it was really the, the enthusiasm, you could feel enthusiasm communicated through the resume, I would say, um, you could feel passion communicated through there, especially the cover letter. You know, I, I think, I think that is, at least for me, that was the biggest thing was like, you know, you again, as, as Lou said, you know, you're going to be working with these people, you know, in the, you know, in the trenches, so to speak for a very long time. You know, I mean, it's, you're, th these are the people you, who are, you're going to spend more time with than anyone else. You know, I haven't at this point since moving out here now, when I, when I was working, when I wasn't working 12 hour days, I couldn't believe how much time I had on my hands. I was like, oh my gosh, a 10 hour day. This is incredible. I can do so much stuff. But so those are the people you're going to be with those people all day long. So again, I would echo what, you know, the, the tailoring, tailoring your, your, your resume as much as you can. And I think, you know, Elizabeth kind of hit on this too. This is not necessarily resume related. Uh, Elizabeth and Lou hit on it, but if you do your homework on where you're applying as well, because if you're applying to this, you know, whatever company X 
and you know, look up who you're applying to, who else works at that company, and see if you know anyone that knows that person. Because a phone call, getting a, a good word put in for you can do as much as anything you can put on your resume. Thanks, JP. What about you, Mark? <clears throat> yeah, um, you know, kind of like what all three people said, I would say, you know, enthusiasm is one of the biggest ones, you know, especially for an internship. You know, if someone was like, you know, send me the resume and they were like, oh, I don't really have much experience. I'd be like, well, you're 19. It'd be weird if you did. Like your, your you know, your goal, your, your, this internship is especially for that and kind of be willing to show why you're, you know, in my interview and in the interviews I do, I ask people all the time what their favorite movies are. You know, um, you know, like Lou said earlier, movies are, you know, that's why we're in this. You know, I get in a call with a potential client. We're just chat about movies for 30 minutes. Like it, it, it's so much fun. And just saying, hey, I love movies. I'm super excited to work here. I would say when you're when you're looking at an internship or you're looking at a job, if they aren't asking for a cover letter, oh, that is the time to write a cover letter. Like any way in which you can kind of just get that one up email the person you know 24 hours after you send it hey there i know i just sent my um resume across i know i just applied for this internship i just wanted to let you guys know i'm so excited about your company you know i've actually seen a bunch of your movies before um you know or i yeah i noticed that you guys have hired this one person with the asu that's where i go all of that stuff just whatever way you can possibly and it's stuff that you can totally do um just stuff little things that kind of get their attention show them why you're so interested um like Dr. Hinberg said, you know, um, we are based in Arizona, we're based in Scottsdale, and we do like interns. So if anyone uh, is looking for anything, obviously, you know, um, Suzanne or Dr. Hinberg has my email. So um, of course, reach out, you know, I just want to make sure to put that out there. Um, but uh, yeah, enthusiasm, you know, in, I saw a few, you know, questions in the chat of people who are like, um, you know, oh, what if I'm not an FMS major? Or what if I'm majoring in English or whatever? You know, totally fine. You know, at the end of the day, having the degree is really, really important. And then knowing that this is something you're excited for. I think I, in, we have 15 employees. I'm almost positive. I'm the only person that works here that has a film degree. Like everyone else has either business or English majors. And for them, it was just they cared about movies. They worked hard. You will learn the skills when you get here, of course. But learning to have a drive, to have enthusiasm, something JP said earlier of even if you're making coffee, make the best damn cup of coffee you possibly can. Do it with a smile. Be appreciative that you're there. Man, you get to make a cup of coffee at a company that has freaking movie posters on their wall. Like you are living the dream of a lot of people who you know went to ASU or in film school and just be happy, be excited that you're there. That's really what we and a lot of our employers are honestly looking for. Thank you, Mark. And thank you for putting out there the internship. I, I wasn't gonna um, put you on the spot about it, but was hoping you would offer that because it's been a great opportunity for our students in the past. Absolutely, yeah. We've had probably five to 10, you know, people from ASU yeah. since I started about two yeah. years ago. And it's been fantastic so far. They, I always kind of say, we try to do it mutually beneficial. So it's not just, you know, you guys coming in kind of doing grunt work. A lot of times we're having you guys watch movies that we're looking at and writing reports on them. And we'll chat with you about them or looking up movies or, you know, looking at festivals. So we try to make it, you know, you guys are giving us a lot and we understand that. So we want to make sure to try to give you guys as much as we can as well. That's awesome. Um, well, we just have a few minutes remaining and I want to be respectful of everybody's time. So maybe each of you could just very quickly um, go around and just say one small thing you wish you had known or done before entering the film media entertainment field. Um, and so um, while we're talking to Mark, let's add, uh, hear from Mark. Yeah, absolutely. Ooh, what is one thing that, see, it's so hard because I feel like you guys, you guys taught me so much. I don't know what I didn't know. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I really would stress, um, I, I sometimes feel like I, I've seen people um, really think that they are, um, you know, I'll stress that again. And, you know, it, it, the, the, the self-worth side, you know, um, knowing obviously, you know, you don't want to be disrespected and knowing there's a lot of jobs out there, but also understanding, you know, the job that you're in, while it might not be your favorite one, there's so many people, especially I went, I went to um, Scottsdale as well for a little bit when I first started college, Scottsdale community, and everyone wanted to be a director. And I know this is FMS, but everyone wanted to be a director. And there was one kid who was like, oh, I really dig sound. 
And I was like, you're going to have a job way before any of us else do, um, because you always need a sound guy on set. And so, you know, being as fluid as you possibly can, you know, hey, I really want to go into, you know, talent agent or talent acquisitions, but someone's looking for a copywriter at a, um, you know, a website or someone's looking for this, you know, just again, willing to do whatever you need to just to get your foot in the door. Again, I came in here literally as an assistant to the CEO. And now I have an assistant and I have other employees below me. And once you can get in, you know, if something were to happen with this job or whatever, I have so many companies I know of and that I can think of that I can reach out to. And so be, be you know, my boss tells me all the time, be brave. You know, the, again, the worst thing that can possibly happen is to say no. I really wish as soon as I graduated, I would have just started, you know, flooding people with resumes, just reaching out to everyone I possibly can. Getting INDB Pro costs like 20 bucks a month and you can have the in emails to every person you've ever thought of. You can email Christina Richie if you care about it. Like you can really just reach out to anyone you possibly can and ask them, you know, hey, do you have any positions open, part-time, full-time, whatever it might be. Just really be willing to put yourself out, out there. But again, I think, you know, Lou talked about this before, understanding also where you currently are you're in school that is very important focus on that try to get internships you don't need to get a job in the industry when you are a sophomore in high school or sorry sophomore in college you know that is the time to really just be focusing on your school trying to get internships once you get out rock it don't let anyone tell you no don't let yourself tell you no who knows you don't know what is going to be out there and what you potentially do so i feel like i'm a football coach like getting people prepped for a game but um, yeah, yeah, you know, it's, it's exciting. I'm really glad I went to ASU. It helped me out a ton. It got me this position. And so, um, yeah, use, use the opportunities you have and understand where you are. I think me, GP, Elizabeth Lou, God, if we were, you know, back then, we would have been grinding as hard as we possibly could to try to get as much done as we possibly can. So try to understand the position you're in. Thank you. Those are so many good points you hit on. Um, JP, what about you? One thing you wish you'd known or done before entering the field? Yeah, I think um, I think Mark kind of hit on this a little bit, and it's a, you know that the word no isn't necessarily a bad bad word because you're going to hear it more than you're going to hear yes. Um, and I can speak as my experience as as an assistant, and then now kind of as a writer, uh, and especially as a writer, you know, if you're ever trying to anyone's trying to get a project off the ground, or you're trying to uh, you know get you know move you know get a script onto the next level or get someone attached. I think like Mark talked about, like you know you might have to talk to 25 actors to try to get someone attached onto a project before you can take it out. And it's like every no, it's like, okay, you kind of have to like have a net next pitch mentality. I'll keep the sports metaphors going with Mark um, is you have to just kind of look to the next one constantly. And I, I think about a year, a year or so after I first moved out here when I was working as an office PA on the middle, we had a production coordinator who kind of was like a little old school and tried to like instill the fear of God in us, like never upset the writers. Don't mess with them whatever and the next year I became showrunner's assistant and I just said you know what what's the worst that could happen like I, I'm getting paid no money and I work long hours like it can't really get worse I could you know so I just started asking can I do this can I do this and not having the fear of no I started asking questions and I started hearing lots of yeses so that two years I spent on the middle as the showrunner's assistant that that point I was, I had asked if essentially if I could do everything. And I spent two years going to every casting session, every post session. I went to set for every rehearsal with my boss. And it essentially was like, you know, if this was like my master's program, that was like my doctorate. Like I, I you know, it was like the PhD. It was the stuff you can never learn. And when I kind of got past that no and being the fear of no, it just opened up a ton of doors. And then, and then I've carried that on elsewhere. You know, you ask someone and you never know, like you never know if they're going to say yes. And again, if the worst case, like, like Mark said, is they say no, well, you're in the same spot you were. So it's not really that big of a thing. So uh, it, it kind of builds on what he and Lou have said a lot about just kind of like putting yourself out there as much as you possibly can, because you don't, in the end, you need one yes. That's it. That's all you need is one yes. Thank you. So helpful. Elizabeth, how about for you? Yeah, I think um, something that like I wish I had either known more about or like practiced more when I was uh, in college or when I was a student is just sort of like learning, um, you know, working on those interview skills um, because you're going to have a lot of interviews um, in this in this industry and, you know, being okay if you get a no 
get being okay if you don't get a response at all um that does happen and that that's weirder but it is you know sometimes they don't respond sometimes it's a no and just like trying to you know take every opportunity every interview as a learning experience um you know even in the interviews you're going to meet a lot of people and like i've had interviews where the interviewer was impressed with me and offered to pass along my resume if they saw any other positions that they thought I'd be a good fit for. And so you never know who could be a possible connection. And so learning the interview skills and learning, even if it's a job that you don't necessarily want, um, like, you know, it, or a, a job that isn't your end goal, um, you know, knowing how to sell yourself, knowing how to present yourself in a good professional manner and, you know, put your best foot forward regardless, because you don't know, you just don't know, like, you know, um, you could be interviewing for a position, um, you know, for what, like a certain individual's assistant, they like you, but they don't want you for your, like to be their assistant, but they know another manager, they know another director, another, whatever, whoever, who needs an assistant. And so, you know, even if you don't get the job that you initially applied for, initially interviewed for, that interview can still matter and it could still lead to something else. Um, and so, yeah, I would just kind of, you know, work on interview skills, work on knowing how to write a cover letter, knowing how to, how to make a resume and how to get things on that resume that um, will be good, <laughs> yes. Thank you, so helpful also. Um, and Lou, finally with your input on this. Yes, other than just like ditto, ditto, <laughs> ditto to what everyone has been saying, um, I think just like agreed, like something I was told is if you don't apply, the answer will always be no. I know that's kind of like a dangerous like thing to toy with, but I kept that in mind of like, yeah, if I don't try it, the answer will always be no. Um, but uh, one more thing that I kind of wish I would have known, um, then and I'm still using it to this day is to just take care of yourself. Um, to make a long story very, very short, um, I am all too familiar, JP, with those long hours like clock in 60 to 80 hour weeks working on, you know, these things that I would have like once like it was like the dream. Um, and so just take care of yourself because um, speaking from personal experience, uh, burnout is very, very real. And to, again, to make a long story short, um, one of the reasons why I thoughtfully chose to um, move back to Arizona and still pursue within um, the, the industry, so to speak. Um, so along with take care of yourself, long hours are real, burnout is real. Um, to a positive point, the industry is also very big and broad and you will find your niche wherever you choose to and um, to not be disheartened if like you experience the burnout um, that I have personally experienced just because now I'm in the happiest place I've ever been but I'm also so grateful for the things that have led me up into this point so I would say yeah um take care of yourself it's a it's a it's a wonderful and like how cool is it we get to work in this industry of like making movies but at this like at the end of the day your help and you as a person is also very important so yeah just take care of yourself it's a great great place to close and and thank you all for staying over past the 11 o'clock time um and i want to thank our alumni panelists um also our moderators for participating um, and for all of you who joined. Um, and for those of you who are students, please be on the lookout for our next panel in this series, which is gonna be on Friday, March 18th, also from 10 to 11. So thank you all and have a great rest of your day and a great weekend. Take care.